Good morning. We've been at this for four weeks, this shelter in place, dealing with COVID-19 even longer. And so things begin to happen to us. And so today I want to talk to us just about, for a few minutes, about being grateful. Because all week long we've been talking about the Father's faithfulness to us and all of the things that he's blessed us with. And so I just want to take a moment to talk with us about that today. Because in all of the things that are going on, as the walls cave in on us, as we're tired of sheltering places, as we're tired of being in each other's faces, even in our homes, we need to take a moment to remember God's faithfulness and then to be grateful. Here's Paul. Paul helps us in Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 8. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, walk in him. Having been firmly rooted and round, grounded and being built up in him, being established in your faith, just as you were instructed, so with overflowing gratitude, let, let the Father know you're thankful. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty, empty deception, according to the traditions of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, but instead walk with Christ. What's he saying to us in those couple verses? He's saying this, be grateful. Don't give in to your fears. Don't give in to the depressions. Don't give in to the feelings of isolationism, loneliness. Because remember, loneliness and aloneness are two completely different things. So don't give in to those. But instead, be thankful, be, be grateful. This is a recurring theme throughout the Old Testament, throughout the New Testament. Because the whole idea there is that as we give thanks to the Father, we're receiving what He has given us. And then we're putting the emphasis back on Him. The Father knows we have issues. Yes, He does. And He knows you're tied up. He knows that you're, that you're sheltering in place. He knows you're working at home. He knows that your children are getting on your nerves. He knows your children aren't doing the schoolwork. He knows those things. Yet, be grateful. This is how some, the psalmist puts it. Give thanks to the Lord for his good. His loving kindness, his mercies endure forever. We've learned that all week long. How the Father has been giving to us through the invisibles. How the Father is faithful and keeps his promises. How the Father keeps renewing our hope and our soul. But as the issues of closeness begin to creep in on us again and again, we find that our nerves get frayed. We find our answers get short. We find that our children begin to bother us. We find out that our spouses are, you know, in our way. They're on our nerves. They're, they're in the, you know, we, we're trying to figure out what to do while we create new spaces for ourselves and our family, new office spaces. You know, because before you were gone all day, you could come home and debrief. You could come home and enjoy one another. Now you're trying not to give in to isolationism, depression, and fear. You're trying to keep your hopes up so that your children don't go around being fret fretful and full of nightmares. You're trying to watch your language. Let's turn that around. And understand there's some things we can do to make sure that we're grateful, to make sure that we are walking with Jesus, make sure that we're not giving into all of the fears that just keep creeping in. Why? Because when we do that, again, we put the emphasis of the problem onto Christ. He says, I want to give your soul rest. I want you to walk with me. I want you to give me the depression. I want you to give me these things. So here's a couple easy tips for us. Because when we start stop looking for cheese to go with our wine, we remember that the Father has provided for us. <clears throat> so what do we do there? Well, first of all, realize the blessings that you have. Realize all of the things that the Father has done for you. There are people around us who are much worse off than we are. But understand what sheltering in place has done. It's giving you a chance to reconnect with your family. So have conversations. Have family dinner. Create memories with your kids. Dad, yeah, Dad, take a minute, roll in the floor with your kids, 
play. Why? Because you're reconnecting. You're doing things differently because this is a new normal. So take advantage of what the Father has given you. A few days ago, I was with a group of, a group of pastors, and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're like everybody else. They want to whine and complain and go looking for good cheese. Instead, one says, I discovered that while I'm sheltering in place, place, I like being with my wife. I said, good stuff. Why? Because when we stump wine, when we begin to look at what the Father's given us, we begin to realize the value of the relationships of the, that are in the people around us. We begin to look at our children differently. Yeah, they're struggling with schoolwork, and yes, you know, you want them to turn things in on, on time. Yes, you want them to be encouraged. Yes. Don't kill them. Just kind of, hey, how do we do this? Because remember, they're looking for a new normal too, and they're looking to you for leadership. Yes, you're stressed, but when I'm grateful, my stressors seem to roll away. Yes, I'm a tad afraid, but when I'm grateful and look at the Father, what does Paul say? Walk with Christ. When I do that, then suddenly my depression, my stressors, my fears roll away because fear is darkness and the Father is light. So the Father says, come, walk with me. Let me speak here. Because we tend to forget what the Father has done. So take time. Make memories. Enjoy this place. I heard of several pick folk last Sunday doing Easter, doing virtual Easter events. Those are fun things. Why? Because the whole family is involved. You can do these things. Recently, one of our, our young folk, uh, young Marys, decided they were going to do a date night. So what did they do? They ordered the food in. They had a date night. Told the kids, you go play with Grandma and Grandpa. You, you stay here in this room. We're going to have a date night. Do things differently. Because if we don't, then we forget all of the blessings that the Father has given us. We forget that we actually like our kids. Actually, we love them. We forget that we enjoy our spouses. But because of the closeness, we forget to do a couple things. So again, here's a couple quick things to do while you're close to us. Okay, make memories to kids. Yeah, that one. I tell young know, married, tell folks, when you get home from work, debrief one another. Take time for just you that the two of you are able to talk. Continue to do that. But at the same time, give each other some space. So, you know, hey, you go do your thing for a minute. You go do your thing for a minute. We'll come back together. Why? Because you've probably been together all day, underfoot, in the way, asking questions, doing things differently. Give each other some space. Why? Because when you do that, you know, oh, you can relax. Continue to do good spiritual care. Are you praying together? Are you in the Word? Are you listening to good messages? Are, are you listening and letting the Father speak to you through blogs and hymns and songs? Then are you getting some exercise? Get off of the couch. Go for a walk around the neighborhood. Even if you've got to walk ten times around your backyard, up and down the stairs in your house. Exercise. Why? Because what that does is it helps you begin to be grateful, to be thankful. Because when we take that posture of gratefulness, thankfulness, we allow the Father to bless us even more. Because we're not carrying the burden. Walter Hawkins helps us here with a very old song. I'm just going to read the first verse. It says this, God has not promised me sunshine. That's not the way it's going to be. But a little rain Mixed with God's sunshine, a little pain, he makes me appreciate the good times. Be grateful. God desires to feel your longing, every pain that you feel. He feels them just like you, but he can't afford you to feel only good. Then you won't appreciate the good times. Be grateful. These could be good times. Create memories with each other. Create memories with your kids. And be grateful, be thankful. Because the Father is faithful to you. He keeps his promises. The Father is faithful in giving you the things you need. The Father is faithful in renewing your hope every morning. The Father is faithful in every day having all of the invisibles provide for you. 
Those are just the blessings of the Father. Yes, I know there are many amongst you who need jobs, etc., etc. Yeah, the Father knows that too. Be grateful. He is taking care of you this very moment. Father God, Lord, forgive us for those times when, Lord, we forget to say thank you. We forget to be grateful. Lord, we're, fear we're fearful. Lord, of this COVID-19, that, Lord, it continues. Lord, our shelter place continues. But, Father, we know that you are faithful because, Father, you've been here before. Lord, as with the Israelites, Lord, they've been through famines and earthquakes and sieges and deportations. And you provided. And so, Father, I pray for my dear friends, Lord, and myself, that, Lord, you would continue to provide for us and help us, Father, to be grateful for your faithfulness to us. These things, Lord Jesus, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Lord.